Everyone always asks me why I'm so angry all the time. And the answer is simple. Because I put in the work. You can't just get this kind of rage with a fast metabolism and some mommy issues. No, this has been vigorously sculpted with brutal resistance training. Look at him. <laughs> Look at his little face. Who could be mad at that? I'll tell you who. I could. Aw, you hungy. Fuck you! If you can stay angry through getting sloppy while listening to your favorite song and watching a sunset, imagine the multi-layered fury you can call on when you actually need it. Life will give you challenges, but you have to fight through them, even if there is no fight. Because if you never stop fighting, then a fight starting is a double fight fist. Accelerating. So it's actually mean and tough what I'm doing right now. Glad we cleared that up. I'm Lyle Rath, and this is Pre-Game Discharge, the angriest video game show with the widowest pause. Nintendo showed off 47 farming games, followed by three whole seconds of Breath of the Wild 2 gameplay. Oh wait, it's called Tears of the Kingdom now, and it comes out May 12th of next year. All right, I let you eat dessert first. Now it's time to tell you about Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life, Fay Farm, Rune Factory 3 Special, a whole new Rune Factory series, not to be confused with Factorio, Various Day Life, yes, that's what it's actually called, and who could forget Harvestella? Who could forget? You didn't forget, did you? Nah, if you like farming games, I mean, I'm genuinely happy for you. You have so many farms you can go to now that are neither a literal farm or a euphemism for having you put down, which is usually what I'm talking about when I bring that up. There's a new fire emblem called Fire Emblem Engage. You play as this deviant art to VTuber pipeline looking ass who can use a magic wedding ring to canonically marry and fuse together with all your favorite Fire Emblem characters like... Marth and Sigur, leave it to me. Wait, what? Sigur. Oh, sick. Oh, okay. Th that that is not what I thought he said. Grand Theft Auto 6 had a big old leaky weaky doodah of 90 internal videos, as well as a bunch of the game's code. Now, I'm not gonna show you the footage for two reasons. One, Rockstar would probably take the video down. I mean, they copyright strike me for using their fucking trailers as B-roll. And two, it's not really anything fun. We're not talking like cool new weapons and story set pieces. It's more like collision detection on a door or like pathing tests for vehicles. It's all super early and years old at this point apparently, so if you do end up going looking for it, really what you're gonna get out of that is insight into what a pre-pre-alpha of a AAA video game looks like. I say that because there have been a lot of real dumb shit takes floating around on the internet in reaction to the footage, including the legendarily stupid graphics are the first thing finished in a video game, so it's definitely going to look like this. Which was so dumb that it inspired a bunch of other developers to post videos and screenshots of their games in early stages, and surprise, surprise, they're all janky and weird looking, although I will say some of them have a just woke up like this kind of vibe, but still, if there's a takeaway from this, it's that game dev is complicated and multifaceted, and it's not usually polished or pretty. I say this as one of the most critical motherfuckers on the planet. If you wonder why so many game trailers lie to you or show you fucking nothing, it's because this is what a game in progress is. When I say Pikmin 4, do you think... Wow, I hope that's happening. Well, fuck you. Miyamoto came here to show your bitch ass a mobile game. Leave. Just kidding. Pikmin 4 is real. There's a whole logo for it and everything. Still not convinced? Would a screenshot change your mind? Delta Rune is taking a while. And you have been a patient little sausage, haven't you? But while you'll have to wait a little longer, Toby Fox posted an update on the Delta Rune website with some gifts, some music, and some details on where the game's at. Delta Rune chapters 3, 4, and 5, i.e. the rest of the game, are all being worked on at the same time. According to Toby, there's about a chapter's worth of work done between all of them, mostly in chapters 3 and 4, and they got a lot of the hard stuff out of the way first. So for now, just sit there and drink your juice and kick your feet and draw weird fan art that we don't like to talk about. Cyberpunk 2077 got a big free update, partially as a tie-in with the shockingly good Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime, and partially because the Apology Tour ain't over yet. The update features three new gigs that tie into the show, six new weapons, and some nice quality of life stuff, like cross saves, being able to change your character's face mid-game, and the ability to pick your clothing appearance no matter what gear you're wearing, which is, I mean, that 
stats big. If you play for stats, your character will look like they Mr. Magoo through a San Francisco Goodwill the whole game. They also dropped a trailer for the first and, I guess, only planned piece of DLC where you pledge allegiance to the flag and then Keanu says, you shouldn't have done that. And presumably some other stuff happens too. Look, playing Cyberpunk at launch on the PS4 is this gaming generation's five miles in the snow uphill both ways. But even though I did that, I gotta say I'm genuinely considering replaying it at some point. They've been addressing a lot of my problems with the game that go beyond the glitches. Only one they haven't gotten to yet is that the arm swords just play that same shit looking canned animation over and over and over and your character just gets locked in place when you do it and I know that's a petty thing to get so hung up on but what was the first thing they ever showed of this game? Hmm? Are you tired of canned things too? Good, cause this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce straight from the farm to your door in less than a week, allowing you to enjoy delicious seasonal flavors right from home. With step-by-step -step recipes, you'll have a fun, stress-free cooking experience that's basically foolproof, so you won't have to go back in time, defeat your former self, fade from existence, and reform the universe to get it right. That's time-consuming, and HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. Hello fr- Whoa! <laughs> that was wild. HelloFresh is up to 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant or grocery shopping, according to a Zagat dining survey. And it's even cheaper if you use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGRATHSEPT16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes plus 3 surprise gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases so you know you won't be chewing alone. Sponsors help us make better videos and HelloFresh Fresh helps you make better food, so give them a shot! Tekken 8 was announced. The reveal trailer features Billy Tekken going fist to fist against his doppelganger, Dark Billy. Also in fighting game news, Street Fighter is going to have character customization. It'll probably pale in comparison to the magic of Soul Calibur. No, no! I got you now. <laughs> is this how <laughs> it ends for the blue blur? It's cool in theory, although in practice, it's probably just gonna be a vehicle for microtransactions, let's be real. Put down your jelly donuts, you doodle yanking dingling. These donuts are great. Jelly filled are my favorite. Yakuza is called like a dragon now, or it always was in Japan. But now we call it that too. And we're gonna get to practice that right now because there are three new games coming. The first one's Like a Dragon 8, the sequel to Yakuza 7, which we called Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, it's gonna be another turn-based RPG one. It looks like Ichiban and Kiryu are teaming up this time, and some screenshots came out confirming the return of the whole band of lovable losers, mostly. My boy Zhao is still MIA. The second is Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. That man is Kiryu, apparently, and he did it so we could go namelessly praying at some sand. It's apparently a little bit of a shorter game and it's a medequel that bridges Yakuza 6 and Like a Dragon. The third is Like a Dragon Ishin, a prequel spinoff. It takes place in feudal Japan and features feudal Japan versions of the Yakuza cast and the classic Yakuza style brawler gameplay, but you know, with swords. It's also apparently kind of sort of a remake, but it's a total ground up remake and there are characters that appear that didn't exist in the original, so I don't know. But that's not the only samurai game in town. Rise of the Ronin is an open world samurai game by Team Ninja. It looks kind of cool. There's some swords and some guns in it. They really want you to know that this took place in that time where swords and guns lived in harmony, like when George Washington done rode dinosaurs in the Bible. But that's not the only other samurai game in town. Town. Assassin's Creed Red is the code name for the feudal Japan Assassin's Creed game that the Assassin's Creed fans have been saying would be cool since way before Ghost of Tsushima basically did Assassin's Creed in feudal Japan probably better than Assassin's Creed will and inspired Ubisoft to apparently go, hey, we should do that 10 plus years after it would have been a good idea. Maybe I should back up though. Assassin's Creed got a big announce a Rooney roundup. Valhalla is getting its final piece of DLC that'll apparently complete the story of that game, which 
You'd think a 60 hour game would get around to the fucking point eventually, but I guess it's going to now. Then they showed Assassin's Creed Mirage, which is the next game in the franchise. It stars a character named Basim. If you've played Valhalla, you should know who he is. It's a prequel, so it's set in Baghdad 20 years before the Vikings start Viking around. And it looks like the goal is a return to form for Assassin's Creed, which is genuinely kind of promising, but I ain't gonna hold my breath for a new Assassin's Creed being good. That's a mark ass suffocating ass move. That brings us to Assassin's Creed Infinity, which is some kind of live service, maybe. It seems to be different games, but Ubisoft is touting it as a singular experience. In it so far are Codename Red, the Japan one, and Codename Hexay, which is pagan themed, I think. These sticks look pretty pagan to me. In a totally not scripted interview, a Ubisoft guy was asked a tough question by a guy with a cue card about multiplayer. And he said, Tee -hee, you've asked the perfect question to make me accidentally reveal that multiplayer may indeed be an aspect of this tee -hee. Well, Danny, it seems we can't hide anything from you. You can't. So. <laughs> but what it is is yet to be seen. Or cared about, honestly. God of War got a giant epic reveal trailer that gave us our first look at a controller. Fuck this, I'm leaving. Ooh! Okay, yeah, so it got a real trailer too. As far as game trailers go, I mean, it's got enough gameplay and story stuff to spark curiosity, but it's vague and cryptic enough to not spoil anything. Just a really nicely put together trailer, honestly. That said, I don't wanna see any more of this fucking game. I'm already sold. Leave it alone till it comes out. Speaking of things they probably shouldn't have shown us, you can be Super Sonic in Sonic Frontiers. It's an ability you apparently unlock at some point a little while into the game, and there are certain bosses wandering around the overworld that that you straight up can't beat without it. Also got some details, the game will run roughly 20 to 30 hours to beat and double that to 100%, which I think is a pretty decent Goldilocks zone for an open world game. I, I really want you to know that that was a clandestine figure of speech. I wasn't trying to bring that full circle to the supersonic thing. Should be like a no homo for bad jokes. <laughs> Holy shit, that's what no pun intended is. Overwatch 2 showed off a new hero named Kiriko. She looks like she plays a little bit like a support Genji and this is Blizzard taking you out for ice cream before they tell you that it's better for mommy and loot boxes to take some time apart. Oh, and also meet battle passes. He's moving in. You got used to your heroes just being there for you? This is the real world, kiddo. Their presence is conditional. You gotta earn it. We've replaced the system that approximates gambling with good old fashioned habit forming negative reinforcement. The children are saved. If there's one thing Danganronpa fans love doing, it's recommending Danganronpa Rampa. But now it looks like the creators of Danganronpa are finally making a game that might get friends of Danganronpa fans to actually mean it when they say they want to get around to it eventually. As a non-weeb, Master Detective Archive's Rain Code is something I absolutely hate saying. But I can look at it without a gut reaction of... Eh. So if it's actually good, Danganronpa fans may finally have their day of going... Eh. I thought you might like it. Eh. Much like Persona fans before them. Halo Infinite may have its last chance to save itself before it gets Kobe'd into the fucking garbage. And to be clear, I'm talking helicopter, not three-pointer with the way this development cycle's been going. Now, while split-screen co-op's been scrapped and the roadmap got bumped back again, it's not all bad because the Forge beta is finally coming in November. There's tons of footage of it that's been posted by 343 themselves, and by a few people who I guess they gave early access to, and it's promising. The tools are extremely robust, which could be a game changer, considering it puts the ability to make content for the game in the hands of literally anybody the fuck else. You know, the weird irony is that users that get really into Forge will technically get to work on Halo Infinite for a more substantial amount of time than their hired contractors. There's a new trailer for... St Stetter Blade? Now you might be asking yourself, am I having a stroke? I mean, I wouldn't blame you. That thing clings like a motherfucker and you're only human. But yes, you have seen this game before and it wasn't called Stetta Stellar, Stellar Blade. That's what that says. Shit. It was called Project Eve or something. It's a PlayStation exclusive We Have Bayonetta at Home, which the real Bayonetta also got a trailer. And honestly, I say just break out the oil and let them fight. Nintendo announced that they were adding golf to Switch Sports 
Sports, Monkey to Mario Soccer, Pavement to Mario Kart, Queen to D5 Check, and an anime real doll skeleton to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Also, anytime Nintendo is announcing stuff, they always fill it with the sawdust of Switch ports. This time we got Tales of Symphonia, Sifu, It Takes Two, the Final Fantasy Crisis Core remake, Resident Evil Village, but it's that weird cloud gaming thing they tried to do with Kingdom Hearts 3, so don't buy it, Tunic, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, which is a 3DS game, and Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, a Wii game that never released outside of Japan. I did not know that without Googling it, but I did know to Google it. That's the kind of integrity you get here when I feel like it. Also, the Switch's Nintendo 64 online thingy is getting the first three Mario parties, Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, Excite Bike 64, Pilot Wings, 1080 Degree Snowboarding, and GoldenEye. That last one's also being added to the Rare Replay Collection for free, which is also on Game Pass. You heard that right. They're re-releasing GoldenEye. Why don't you go play it again if it holds up so well? Jimmy Fallon Fortnite fans, get ready to hit the gritty and jump off the battle bus straight into the Fallon verse. What could bring these two titanic franchises of unprecedented quality together, you might ask? Why, the Samsung phone, of course, which this advertises somehow. Welcome to the future of gaming, by the way. How you liking it? We finally got to see some actual game of Zenless Zone Zero, the next game from the studio that made Genshin Impact. Gameplay-wise, nothing about it jumped out as anything more than a straightforward action beat-em-up, but the animation looks really nice, especially in the cutscenes. Ooh, look at this little red guy go! Those jelly donuts look delicious! Team Ninja showed us the goods on Wo Long, their latest swing at the Soulsborne genre. They made Neo, so they've had some practice at this point, and you know what? To its credit, it, it does look pretty long. Not shockingly so. I don't know that I'd excitedly let out some sort of interjection or anything, but it's either that or start another Elden Ring playthrough I know I won't finish. Now that game makes me say, whoa, long. But sometimes, whoa, appropriate length is good enough if it puts in the effort, right? Sometimes it's about the motion of the ocean. You feel me? Do you know what I'm talking about? Your girlfriend isn't happy. She wanted me to slip a joke about it into the episode, but I think I should just be straight up with you. It's it, seriously- NVIDIA announced and showed specs for the new 4090 and 4080 graphics cards. The big bastard 4090 runs 1600 bastard bucks, and in raw power, it seems to smoke the 3090 pretty solidly. Cause yeah, that's how that works, right? I say for no particular reason. Well, there are two separate 4080 models with completely different specs. The 16 gigabyte version runs 1200 bucks, and compared to the 3080, it's the same across the board improvement. The $900 12 gigabyte 4080 still has a higher clock speed, but it actually has about a thousand less processing cores than the 3080 does. It's still probably faster, but it's spec'd more like what you'd expect out of the 4070 model. Aside from the specs on paper, though, the next gen architecture will apparently improve performance specifically on ray tracing and DLSS, which is that thing where it upscales an image with AI so you still get 4K resolution with 1080 frame rates. Also, the power draw is roughly the same, so you won't need a big stupid new power supply. The 4090 releases October 12th with the 4080 coming in November, but if your big takeaway from this is all, whoa, those are fucking expensive, there's at least a price drop in the still perfectly fine current gen graphics cards to look forward to. Octopath Traveler 2, a a game I genuinely thought released already was announced! That's right! In my silliness, I had mistaken the similar-looking, equally memorably titled smash hit, Qualitolium Triangle Rebuked! to be the sequel to Octopath Traveler. Turns out, it wasn't! But this is! Disney did a game showcase. I, I know that's not exciting to anyone here since Disney games only exist for well-intentioned grandparents to buy as Christmas presents because they don't know what Kratos looks like, but they showed trailers for Mickey Mario Kart, Marvel Midnight Marvels, and that Disney Animal Crossing thing. They also announced a platformer based on those Mickey Mouse shorts, Avatar Gears of War for the phone, which I'm pretty sure is not the same Avatar game they teased at E3, and they showed a teaser for some Marvel game that takes place in World War II, where you can play as Captain America, Black Panther, Spear Woman, or a army guy. Sony showed off some PSVR stuff. The headset and the controllers themselves got a product sizzle reel in case you needed a visual to really grasp what they mean by things like eye tracking and haptic feedback, but also they showed some games. There's a Star Wars game, and a game called 
car in the dark. And there's a tabletop game kind of deal called Demio. Bad marketing, they should have called it Game Dunio. Wouldn't have made sense now, but it aged into it. Everybody's favorite video game boy, Donkey, is starting a game publisher called Big Mode. People are treating this like it's either going to be the second coming of video games or turning their nose up and saying, hmm, just because you play video games doesn't mean you can make video games, which is completely true. But he's not making video games. He's a publisher. Most of them don't even fucking do that. You remember when the Boston Red Sox guy read about how much money World of Warcraft was making, so he thought he could get quote unquote Bill Gates rich by making a video game and then somehow trick the government of Rhode Island into using tax dollars to fund kingdoms of Amalur? I mean, where's the bar at? Are we big Bobby Kotick stands here? Like, I don't know. I think it's worth seeing what he does. I regret to inform you that the minions from Mario v Minions Dawn of Justice talk now. And isn't that exactly what you wanted? I don't know if this is better or worse, but they just kind of sound like regular guys. Funky footwork making you faint. Karma the Dark World is a cool looking horror game with freaky demons, big dinner mannequins, and mans with TVs for heads. See, that last one is scary because they can make you watch whatever they want. We are the Lizard Squad and we are nothing to fear. The baby has fallen. That's right, live service game Babylon's Fall will be shutting its servers down early next year in a genre defining failure that will leave the game completely unplayable a year after its launch. Not that anyone was playing it anyway. Roughly two months after the game, game came out, the concurrent player count dropped to just one player. But who are they? That was what I wanted to find out, so I started my search. My first thought was to look for anyone actively talking about the game on internet forums, but that was a dead end. My next instinct was to buy the game on Steam and see if it would instance me with the other player if I logged on. But not only is the game no longer available on Steam, according to Steam charts, I wouldn't have found them anyway. Our mystery player was on PlayStation, but PSN wasn't selling the game either, and my local GameStop had given away all the remaining copies as Frisbees. I thought I hit a dead end. Nothing I tried was working, but then I had an idea. PlayStation has a publicly listed trophy leaderboard. I couldn't see who was playing, but I could see who had played. After manually adding over six the two players, I finally found who I was looking for. And after all this time, I could have never expected who it would be. Hi there, I'm Mitch Bugwall. I'm a game reviewer, and I work for JostleJoysticks.com. You're a game reviewer? I was not expecting that. This is kind of a weird question, but do you know why I'm talking to you right now? No, sir. I figured you might want my uh, professional input but I'm beginning to think that's not the case. It's kind of the case. I mean, you're familiar with the video game uh, Babylon's Fall, right? Babylon's Fall. Yes, yes, I remember that. Yeah, so you are currently the only remaining player of that game. I don't I don't think that's right. Uh, you, you must have got the wrong guy. Boogerwaller Big M, that's you, right? That's your screen name? That's me, yeah. According to PSN, you you're online on Babylon's Fall right now. You're literally playing it. No, I like, you You can see my hands. It's, I'm, I'm not doing it. Well, I mean, you're probably not playing it, but you're online. No, I, I haven't even touched my PS4 in months. God, hang on. Let's see. Oh, shit, it is on. Let me just... Oh, oh, oh my God! It was it was on the whole time. I I had no idea. God, man, I'm such a klutz. You still there, Lyle? Anyway, here are the game releases for the month. Do people think I've been playing this? I'm Lyle Wrath, and this has been Pre-Game Discharge. Come back at the end of every month for more deeper truths and cutting-edge investigative journalism.